Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I want to give you my more in depth thoughts about the four new uniforms for Luna, Sharon, Hyperion, and Miles. And I want to discuss them because it's important to realize that not every uniform is going to be spectacular, it's not going to be a Winter Soldier type situation, but we can still find some value in each one, and if you really do enjoy the character, I do think that all four of these uniforms are worthwhile. But again, if you're not going to be using the character for very many things, and I'll try to recommend some specific game modes, but if it's just something you're going to purchase just to make the character stronger but never use, you may want to consider not purchasing it. Um, but we're going to start, first of all, with the ugliest uniform, uh, Mr. Hyperneck and check out how it kind of improves him. He did get a base kit rework, so you will see some improvements out of his normal uh, look. But in addition to that, with his uniform, he's got a 15% crit rate increase, flat crit rate, not crit, not guaranteed crit rate. And he's also got en enhanced healing, so he'll heal for more on his third skill, which makes him quite tanky when you combine that with the boost to all attack and all defense that his uniform gives starting at 10 percent from normal all the way up to plus 20 all attack and all defense at mythic but uh you looking at his base kit it's still quite good he's got an instant iframe on his second skill which uh allows him to do some nice aoe damage he's got some nice uh abilities as well why did i get interrupted there i don't know let's charge that up and blast these guys off um, but he's got some really nice abilities. He does a lot more damage, as you can see, and he's quite dominant uh, once he starts rolling with that buff from his fifth skill. And if you can kind of chain that, it really helps him out. So he still seems pretty good without his uniform, but now you'll see that with his uniform, uh, it's basically just a tankier situation. And it's it may be easier to uh, reflect in something like a world boss ultimate fight where it's a little bit longer, but in Hyperion's case, He's able to take a lot of punishment. His third skill gives him a long iframe, so you can really um, get out of danger. So I think damage is not going, or I think damage would be the more pressing issue for him uh, if that is the case. But you can see he heals for about 10,000, uh, and then he just lets off a huge beam. Uh, his fourth skill got interrupted there. Second skill is the same, but his third skill is really where it changes. So he heals, but then he pops up, and you can actually move this around. She's taking damage, and then she'll take damage when he comes down very cool ability very long ability so I took a little bit longer to finish them off there because I was showing off the ability but it's very very good defensively and especially for manually played game modes I do think that this uniform and I think Hyperion in general with this charging ability is not a character that you want to auto play so I think he may be better but still not very good for things like Alliance Conquest where it's auto only because he will sit there and charge his fifth skill the entire time he may not accurately or adequately aim his third skill to really hit enemies, but it does make him a lot more fun and a lot more kind of unique and versatile to play manually, especially in World Boss. And I think World Boss is where you can find some use for him. He's got a lot of energy damage, but he also has some physical, so I think he can do different stages. You'll be surprised. Proxima, some Call Obsidian, some um, Corvus, maybe even some Thanos. Not necessarily super high levels, uh, but he also does have now 45% all attack instead of his 24%, so he can definitely push a lot higher than um, he could have before. Next up, we're going to be, because we have to fight this stage, we can't fight against the villain because we have a bunch of heroes, we're going to be looking at Luna Snow's new uniform. And of course, first we're going to take a look at her base kit uh, and, if, and see just how long it takes us to get Rocket Raccoon down. We don't have Ignore Dodge, so that's going to be one of the factors here, but we're going to see the um, AoE of her abilities in addition to the damage. Now, one thing I think a lot of people uh, have noticed about Luna Snow, and this is a pretty quick fight. One thing that I think a lot of people have noticed about, noticed about Luna Snow is that her damage seems to be lower with her uniform. I haven't been able to confirm this just yet, but that is those are the rumors that I have heard. And it's unfortunate if that's the case, but uh, yeah, not always... Uniforms aren't always better offensively. It could be that this uniform is much better defensively, much better for something like Conquest or Timeline, but we'll have to wait and see. The actual uniform bonus gives her 10% cold damage, which is honestly negligible, and the enhanced effect of Encore is honestly negligible. It bumps a 30% rate of activation to kind of refresh her cooldown on certain skills to 60%. It's not that useful because you're still going to want to keep your skills in a particular order because you're trying to line up your damage proc. You don't want to just spam skills endlessly unless you have 
you know, an invincibility proc. Um, but she does have some increased AoE and some increased um, kind of flexibility with her fifth skill because the heal comes at the beginning. The real highlight that I want to make for you guys is just how bad her fourth skill is. And I talked about it before, but you can see it's a long animation. And right there at the end uh, comes the entice ability. Now, of course, the damage is good, but it really does make the character quite a bit harder to play. And, uh, you know, you'll see when you do play as her because she has a fourth skill with no iframe and a long animation, as you saw. And her second skill is a long iframe with no, or a long attack with no iframe. It's just a long animation. She essentially has two skills that she can never use in a tight situation against a world boss opponent. And so because of that, you're kind of stuck using one, three, and five. And now while those skills have iframes or immunity and lots of damage and heals, uh, it makes for a bit more of an awkward uh, piece of gameplay. And... Without her uniform, her second skill had a cone ability that you could summon and then cancel into other skills. But her second skill now doesn't do that. She skates back and forth, as you guys saw at the end of the battle with Rocket. And so that doesn't really lend itself to um, timing these kinds of stackable attacks altogether the way it did without her uniform. So I think that's where a lot of people are frustrated with the character. And we're still trying to figure out her uh, abilities. But I do think that the character uh, does gain some bonuses and some uh, improvements from her uniform. It's just not really quite clear uh, as of yet what they are or how good they are. So I think for Luna's uh, uniform in particular, uh, you may want to hold off on it until a later date if you're not sold on it yet. This is the one that I'm probably most questioning at the moment of my purchases. Hers and possibly Hyperion's, but Hyperion's is okay. It's only 750 crystals. Moving on uh, back to Miles Morales, this is a very interesting one that I wanted to save for stage 27. There's an en energy immunity, but this is a very difficult stage traditionally. Uh, we had to use Quicksilver once upon a time, then Winter Soldier with his new uniform. So this stage has been passed down through the ranks of different speed heroes. So I want to highlight just how outrageously bad uh, Miles Morales is without his uniform. Brace yourselves for what's about to come because... I cannot imagine him surviving very long, and I do have a pretty well-built Miles Morales after all uh, is said and done. And yeah, that's we're going to try a couple times here because I don't want to appear biased or I don't want to exaggerate how bad he was, but I just died in two seconds. For those of you that are looking away from your phones at the moment or you're driving, yeah, I died in two seconds and I got about w one skill off. He has two iframes uh, without his uniform, but they're both partial iframes, and they're both painfully difficult to time. And so uh, because of that, you even take damage in between skills. You get stunned. That time it was four seconds. This is really not a joke. This is how bad uh, Miles Morales is without his uniform. Now, let's put on the Into the Spider-Verse uniform. I have it at rank legendary. I can show you guys the options here real quickly. We got... Infinity War Spider-Man, Black Panther, Ant-Man, and the Wasp from the new movie. Cable, and then the last one is Ghost. So, a lot of very good recent uniforms. One paywall uniform, not not too bad. The uniform bonus is 25% lightning damage. He does have lightning damage on 2 and 4, and I believe possibly 3. Yeah, 2, 3, and 4. Um, but I do not recommend giving him lightning damage. I would recommend a crit, crit or crit, crit damage, uh, damage proc obelisk, or something with dodge. I went ahead and gave him a CTP of energy, and I was able to cap most of his other stats with my Uru, and so he's looking at uh, max attack speed, which is pretty important, 50% uh, crit rate, and 192 crit damage. He also has a self buff that's new on his fifth skill, so you don't want to go higher than 65% crit rate for his overall build because of the fact that he's going to um, get that buff. But... In terms of the ISO-8 set, this is the only part where I have had some inefficiency. Power of Angry Hulk is not the best one. You would want to get Overdrive. I just couldn't roll it. I spent too much gold. Uh, and, he, you know, he likes to have... Or he can have max attack speed quite easily, but you don't need it on his ISO-8 set. So now we're going to go and see just how much Miles Morales has changed. And this is honestly miraculous. This is a zero to hero type uh, transformation. And I got interrupted there. I wasn't able to use my first skill, but I took the damage anyways. We're going to web these guys up now. Uh, we're going to... Nope, oh, we're not going to... Okay. All right, well, we died there, but I'm going to try that one again. That was a bad showing, admittedly. We just need to get the webbing off at the beginning, and then we will be able to kind of start the 
uh, crowd control effects, but you can see the damage is quite outrageous uh, against super villains. He's able to basically two or three shot uh, Dormammu. He's dead now. And now we're down to just the uh, brother and sister combo here. But yeah, with no leadership, you know, 20, 30 seconds in here, uh, and he's able to make short work of this stage. Quite cool. Miles Morales uh, really taking a big leap forward in terms of his overall value. And we're stuck again here in the corner with Doctor Strange, but we can kind of make it work here if we uh, carefully use our uh, crowd control effects. I'm not as confident with his uh, kind of Venom-based ability, this number two skill, but uh, comboing it with four is quite nice, and you can see the lingering lightning damage kind of uh, guard breaks the enemies. Got the freeze there, Doctor Strange being frozen this time around, the tables have turned. And there we go. So 30 seconds and 30 seconds, Miles basically transforms from a character who couldn't last five seconds to one that can grind it out, can do substantial damage. And I think specifically for Miles Morales, you're going to see value in building him up for World Boss Ultimate. Uh, so if you want to take him against Corvus, or if you want to take him against Proxima or something like that, because of the fact that his uh, Ultimate Spider-Man gives him 120% increased damage. So that stacks with Shuri or Coulson. And because of that, he's able to pull off massive DPS moves. Uh, and I was able to clear a stage 40 Corvus, uh, and I will be trying and pushing other stages in the future with him uh, and possibly seeing what his absolute limit is. But that one is quite exciting. Lastly, we want to check out Sharon Rogers, and we're going to do it against the stage 28 Rumble. Now, Sharon Rogers is still a very good character without her uniform, so a lot of people are going to be quite skeptical about the uniform's uh, ability. I think that the difficulty curve is still very much alive for her uniform, and I did discuss that in yesterday's video as well, but without her uniform, you want to do something like this. She moves around a lot, which kind of masks itself as additional survivability, but it actually isn't. Uh, because in a lot of cases, characters have tracking, and so they can um, track her through that. And because she only has a couple of partial iframes, not full iframes, and she has the three seconds or the five seconds of immunity on her third skill, um, it doesn't offer her as much survivability. Now, her new uniform, while it does offer her higher base stats in terms of the max buff when you have it uh, at... Mythic, because I have them both now at Mythic, you can see this one offers 20 and 20, and this one offers her 25 and 25. Additionally, you're going to get the 10% damage reduction, which stacks with her 30 for 40% damage reduction, which is, you know, substantial, and also 10% chain hit damage. This is possibly relevant for uh, ABX, but remember that we already have an amazing Blast Hero, so we don't need another one. Uh, you know, Cable kind of trumps all. But in the sense of her new uniform, you'll see that there's a bit, it's a bit of a different dance. Rather than jumping back and forth, uh, the rotation that I'm going to use is a little bit different and it requires some patience. I think a lot of people will say it's slow, but I actually have learned, I'm, I'm kind of, it's kind of growing on me. Basically, you do three and then five and then you just wait there and then you do four at the end and you take advantage of the iframe at the end of four and then you have a quick iframe on two and you're back to three and then you pop five. Super easy. She has larger AoE now with the uh, fifth skill ability instead of the ball. She doesn't penetrate super armor, so that could be seen as a negative. But I think overall, I really enjoy the kind of more stationary Sharon Rogers with the new uniform. I'm going to uh, release some additional World Boss footage in future videos for you guys to see just how impactful uh, the new uniform is. But I was able to push a stage 35 Corvus with this new uniform, despite the fact that she has both physical and energy. And I was able to do that because you can lean on either one skill or the other. And I think that's something to highlight as well. With her other armor, with her other uniform, you don't really want to proc her damage on five, because five doesn't have as much uh, damage. Four is really where you want the damage to land, but that means that if she's fighting someone like Cull Obsidian, it's not gonna do as much damage because it's physically cha channeled damage the the thing about the dark star armor which is kind of like 
let's say someone like Deadpool. Deadpool's fourth skill and fifth skill both deal insane damage. And I think that is what I'm starting to realize with Sharon Rogers. Both four and five are valid targets for your damage proc. So rather than doing some kind of crazy three cancel, five cancel, four, and praying that it lands, you can much more simply do three cancel, five, it will land and you'll do tremendous damage. Or if it doesn't land, you can do four and that will do tremendous damage. Additionally, you can take advantage of the fact that with only five seconds of immunity, you can cast the fourth skill at the end of the immunity and the fourth skill iframe in addition to the second skill short instant iframe will give her enough survivability to where she can essentially face tank uh, until you can use her third skill Vanguard Lance again. So those are my thoughts on the four uniforms. While I do think that Miles Morales' uniform offers the most obvious upgrade, I think that Sharon Rogers is going to end up being the most relevant uniform out of the four. Uh, Hyperion's, I think, is going to kind of just be middle class, maybe upper middle class uniforms. Uh, but of course, the look of the uniform is going to haunt him far longer than any other. And then, I don't know. I think this is still a big question mark, the Andromeda suit for Luna Snow. Uh, I really do encourage you guys in the comments to below if you've had some really awesome luck with her or if you've developed some really ironclad iframe um, damage proc skill rotation that works to let us know because everything I've seen is, is mixed and there's some good, there's some bad, and there's a lot of confusion. And I'm still kind of in that boat too. And so I can't really in good faith recommend that uniform, this uniform, until I can know for sure that it is a solid upgrade. Other than, of course, the stats, because she's never had a uniform. So let me know what you guys think of the four uniforms. Let me know what you think of the upgrades. Subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to support me. And of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.